Professor, I would like to ask if you can hear my voice uh, clearly and please let me know in the chat box or the chat box if you would like to say. Um, yes, I see Pandu Satrio. Is, okay, all right. It's good. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, okay, so allow me to introduce myself. My name is Amy Vimitasari uh, as the student counselor of Nupik Neso Indonesia. So very, uh, very warm welcome to our uh, event today, study in Holland uh, online series uh, di rumah aja. For those who are uh, joining the, the first time, uh, we organize this event every Wednesday uh, where we have online learning as well as uh, Holland uh, lecture or Holland uh, talk. Uh, also, we also uh, organize every Friday where we have a more interactive seminar uh, focusing more in the yeah, studying uh, and living in the Netherlands. Basically, uh, the, the speaker will be from students or uh, alumni itself. So for today's session, uh, as you may have already known, uh, we have a guest speaker from TS School uh, for Business and Society, uh, Ms. Marlene Cronin as the Senior Career Consultant. And the topic for today is uh, how to build a, a career plan that leads to your ideal job. Uh, on this topic, Ms. Cronin will uh, further discuss on uh, how to do uh, self-assessment and research, how you will be receiving a career uh, guidance on how to create a concrete plan, making choices, and setting up your own goals. Uh, in the session as well, as well uh, Ms. Cronin will be accompanied by uh, Ms. Eva Lai uh, TS, as a TS program advisor. Uh, as a program advisor, she works um, normally in generally in the application process and admission as well uh, and at the end of this webinar we also have a q a session so if you have questions uh, already during the presentation please uh, feel free to write your questions uh, in the chat pod uh, and we will try our best uh, to discuss one by one uh, during the q a session uh, and also apart from that uh, there will be an, an interesting game uh after our um uh session where we also uh, we where we all going to play a game uh that is related to your career plan and the winner will uh, uh win a big prize from ts of course so everyone uh be ready and pay attention to the presentation um before uh, we start uh, to continue to introduce our uh, guest speaker, I will give you a brief uh, presentation about Nufik Neso. So what is uh, Nufik Neso? If you don't know, uh, Nufik is a Dutch, uh, a non-profit Dutch organization based in The Hague, the Netherlands. It is a organization that supports internalization of um, education and it is funded by the Dutch government. Uh, as of today, we have uh, approximately uh, 10 uh, representative offices uh, of NUFIC uh, around the world. And uh, it, it is called NUFIC NESO. Uh, NESO itself is a short for Netherlands Education Support Offices. Okay, so what are the uh, key um, roles for NUFIC NESO? The first one is uh, we give uh, or provide information of, about study in Holland. So we also give st uh, student counseling for Indonesian students. We also promote uh, cooperation between uh, higher education institution in Indonesia and uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, apart from that, we support Holland Alumni Network where, where we normally uh, organize um, Holland uh, alumni lecture, for example, or uh, Holland alumni uh, reception, for example. Uh, uh, apart from that, we also manage uh, some uh, scholarship program uh, such as Stunet or uh, Student in Netherlands, Orange uh, Knowledge Program, Orange Tulip Scholarship, and EU Share. Uh, and finally, we also facilitate uh, science, uh, scientific research uh, collaboration between the Indonesians and uh, the Netherlands uh, institutions. So uh, if you, uh, for those of you who would like to know more about study in Holland or you have uh, any questions uh, regarding uh, study in Holland, you can always uh, contact us uh, via our uh, email or numbers uh, that is uh, 
presented in uh, our slide or uh, we also organize um, regularly uh, online counseling uh, you can uh, access this uh, via bit.ly uh, slash oc neso or you can just uh, uh, get more information from our website and our social medias now uh, i also would like to uh, promote this event uh, we that we have uh, next month it is a virtual study in Holland Fair uh, that will be organized on Wednesday on 18 uh, of November. Uh, there will be uh, approximately 29 uh, Dutch higher education institutions that will, uh, pre uh, will be presented there and you will be able to uh, yeah, ask uh, questions, uh, further questions about your studies or your uh, courses in that uh, uh, universities uh, that you would like to choose uh, that i would like to choose so uh that's about it uh now uh i'd like to introduce you uh to our uh, special guest um uh, mrs uh marlene Kurunen. she is a senior career consultant at the uh, at tia school for business and society uh, Ms. Cronin uh, has been working uh, as senior career consultant since uh, 2014 and uh, she has a broad experience in career consulting, coaching, career guidance, and team management. She also uh, yeah, has experience in inspiring and encouraging in a cooperative setting. Uh, she is a, a certified career consultant, NOLA. She also believes that each candidate has a unique talents and her challenge uh, and ambition are to discover these talents, find your uh, passion and your drivers and guide you in a career where you can thrive and excel with passion and satisfaction. So that's uh, a <laughs> good part about <laughs> Ms. Uh, Kunin. Now about a little bit more about TIAS. Uh, TIAS itself is a um, university that is located in uh, Utrecht and offers a wide range of programs from full-time uh, MBAs uh, to uh, also other master programs. Uh, so TIAS itself uh, welcome uh, all of the students from uh, different backgrounds, including non-business and business. Uh, one of the highlighted uh, program is the personal and career development program, which can be very, uh, very much helpful uh, in career development, uh, especially the career services provided by TSS uh, career consultants, such as uh, yeah, Miss Krun and it's herself. So uh, yeah, within uh, this uh, session, uh, we also have uh, another guest uh, that is uh, TS alumnus, uh, which is uh, Mr. Dimas Utomo. Uh, he will uh, he will be joining us uh, later uh, in. Uh, uh, when uh, Miss Cronen has uh, presented her presentation, so without a further ado, I uh, would like to give the floor to Miss Cronen, please. Okay, thank you so much, Amy, and uh, thanks for your uh, nice pitch. So uh, you couldn't, I couldn't do it better, to be honest. <laughs> so it was a good pitch uh, uh, to uh, present me. Um, yeah. Again, my name is Marlene Kronen, and I'm working as a senior career consultant in TIA, School for Business and Society in the Netherlands. And uh, we are located in both in Tilburg and in Utrecht. Uh, though our full-time programs, we do have two full-time programs, uh, one for full-time MSCBA, which is for young professionals between zero and two years of experience. It's a one-year program. And another program is the full-time MBA program, which is for more uh, experienced people, an average of, let's say, seven years of working experience. And um, both programs are offered in uh, Utrecht, um, which is a very central location in the Netherlands. And um, uh, it's really a pleasure to, uh, and an, also an honor, to be honest, to work with these students because, in general, I can admit these are all very eager and motivated and ambitious students. So for a career consultant, it's a, it's a real honor and pleasure to work with people who are so eager and ambitious to work uh, on their career. 
uh, path. And uh, besides the academic program, of course, you can imagine in both full-time MSCBA and MBA programs, we are offering a very broad academic program uh, uh, with some specializations in, M in the MSCBA, but okay, we will not dive into that right now. Uh, but besides this academic program, we are also offering a personal and career development program. And um, this is, uh, yeah, this is also a very uh, intense program, but um, during the program itself, uh, students are kind of hesitant, what will this bring to me? But afterwards, we hear more often and uh, very often that this part of the program uh, has made a difference in their, in their further career. And I can imagine, to be honest. Um, so uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, uh, as a senior career consultant, um, to be honest, where we're going to talk about today, I think I'm a good example of that because I have been in several other jobs before. And let's say eight years ago, I was not so happy in my job. And that's why I uh, uh, decided to uh, go to a career consultant myself and to dive into uh, the steps that I will present you today on how to land in your ideal job. Uh, so that's maybe the funny part, and um, it, I yeah, I can tell you that it's um, that it feels so good when you feel that things are coming together, and that let's say your demands, your needs, your your passion, uh, but also your values uh, that you will meet them all in your job. That's that's the best thing that you can experience. And uh, yeah, we are working at least, let's say 40 hours a week. So uh, how much uh, have fun and how good is it if you can say like, hey, I really like my job. So um, yeah, uh, for now I'm uh, there to uh, help people in their career and to guide them into the uh, to the next step in their career, and um, mostly based on, uh, let's say, identify themselves, and also how to brand themselves towards the job market in CV, LinkedIn, job interview, pitches, networking. So that's, uh, um, let's say, where, where my added value is. Okay, so uh, let's say the, the, the the personal and career development program in TIAS, but in general also when you do this for yourself, uh, are these uh, four main questions uh, that let's say that you have to get uh, to be answered during a certain period of time um, uh, to be more successful and to be able to land in your ideal job. So the framework of the personal and career development program is about those four questions. Who am I? What are my talents, my qualities, my drivers, my energy takers, etc. but also my energy givers, of course. Um, and then, of course, it's important to, to find out what career do I want? And don't forget the last part, how do I get there? So this is the framework where we based our personal and career development program on. And um, in general, I don't want to dive into deep, but this is what um, TIAS is offering their MSCBA and MBA students in this full in this uh, personal and career development program. So it's uh, uh, based on, let's say, uh, teamwork. Um, uh, how can we work? Uh, um, uh, yeah, most ideally together uh, in good collaboration. What can we learn from each other? What is my place in a team? Uh, people give feedback on me. What do I learn from it? So this is a place where you know can know yourself even better. Uh, we also offer a, a, a very extensive personal leadership program. Uh, of course, also one-on-one -on -one career consulting, uh, and don't forget the networking events, which is also very important, of course, to, to build your network in a strange country. 
Um, we are also offering some skills workshops like presentation skills, personal branding, uh, communicating with impact, that kind of um, uh, more skills related workshops. And we are also offering learning labs uh, like targeted CV, like LinkedIn, like job interview. And we are also offering you some personal coaching sessions uh, where you are able to speak with your coach uh, mainly about the two first questions who am i and what are my talents and this is also something that you will discover in your personal leadership program in your teamwork uh, but also during this very intensive uh, year in tias and besides we are also offering a lot of let's say career platforms and assessment tools that will be helpful to also to learn yourself but also to present yourself towards the job market so that's more in general uh, for now, um, uh, today, uh, I would like to uh, share with you our approach on, uh, let's say, uh, how to be, how to start your exploration phase uh, with the final objective of landing in your ideal job and that meets your goals and expectations. And it's my belief and also my experience that the earlier you start with this exploration uh, the better you know yourself and the better you will be able to present yourself in a convincing and well-determined way at the time that you're ready for the job market and you're ready to start your applications so we will dive into uh, some phases uh, you can see them here i won't repeat them you can read them yourself and let's dive into the first part which is identifying yourself so there are several ways to get answers to those questions what are my talents what are my qualities what is my personality what are my competencies what is making me special what is really me uh, um, and yeah there are several ways to get there um you can come to tias of course where we can help you but um another way is also to look at um kind of there are quite a lot of free assessment tools which are very helpful to give answers to those questions but also uh, several exercises so not immediately an assessment but also exercises you can do to answer those questions and um, while doing that getting answers to this kind of question questions it's also very good to discuss them with people who are close to you so maybe some good friends or family or classmates um, to discuss uh, your findings because then you can um, yeah then you can specify it even better and uh, yeah also check some things that maybe you're not sure about so um, these are things that you really can find uh, but if you want to know more about that those exercises you can do um, yeah, please let me know via Amy and then uh, I can help you with that it's also important to know your drivers what are my energy givers and but also what are my energy takers um, uh, because the better you know and the better you do this research uh, in advance the better you know afterwards what fits with you what kind of job fits with me but also when you're looking at values what kind of companies fit best with me uh, because there's quite a difference in culture for example or in values and are your personal values meeting the values of the company so it, it's very important that you do this exercise this identification phase very carefully and don't forget to 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 dive into this phase because i guess a lot of people dive immediately into applications and which is a kind of tricky because how good can you sell yourself in job interviews if you don't do this and that's what i really advise you to do a good a good example of for example uh, the exercise about energy givers and takers is uh, last week I spoke to a director in an educational institute and um, 
uh, and she did this exercise and um, she wants to apply internally in, in her own organization for another job. And this job is more about, let's say, um, representing her school in a national platform uh, with their, let's say, their uh vision their point of view on several issues um lobbying uh networking uh, that kind of things um so she really has to pre represent her school in this big platform and uh, which requires, of, car, of course, a lot of patience, a lot of lobbying, a lot of, uh, let's say, meeting people. And then I saw her energy taker list. And on her energy taker list were two things that are really important for this job. And one of them was she hated meetings. Hey, this is this is this is quite dangerous. Um, another thing, what she didn't like was be was uh, driving politics. So um, being political, oh, well, she really hates it. So I said, okay, but if these things are on your energy takers list, why are you so enthusiastic about this role? Oh, and then she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is really confronting, but I think you're right, Marlene. I really have to think. Um, better if this is my ideal job so this is helpful this is helpful to land in your ideal job also looking at your values and your demands and wishes um, it's important to discover what company what i just said before what fits best with you but also what are your other demands and wishes do you want to work independently or do you prefer to work in teams do you want to work in a corporate or do you like to be in a small company where you can do uh, more broader uh, tasks um, where they require more on your let's say creativity and your um, your innovation skills uh, so it's really important to think about that very carefully and uh, you will find out that and you will discover that uh, there's a big difference between being reactive and being proactive and this is the start of being proactive because you are in the lead you are in the driver's seat and i guess dimas <laughs> will confirm this when he will speak about his experience uh, because being in the driver's seat is giving you much more satisfaction it will give you much better feeling because you are the one who determines how your career path will be. Okay, so um, we do have a poll question right now, Amy. Am I correct? Yeah, this is the poll. Uh, we would like to, to know uh, from you um, the answer to the question, I know exactly who I am, I know what my talents are, I know what I want, and I know how to get there. Is this a yes for you or a no? And then you can submit it. Amy? Do we see the uh, the outcome immediately or afterwards? Uh, we have six, uh, 67, 37 out of 55 have answered the polling. So we should we uh, stop here or do you want to have the, the full? Yeah, we can wait a little okay. bit more, but maybe not okay. too long, but it's, right. uh, yeah. Yes, all right. Let's uh, end voting, yeah? Yeah. So then you will share the result? Yes. Oh, I nice. have correct. So do you see it? Yeah. So uh, what, uh, okay. <laughs> what, what Let does me, it say? Okay, it says uh, 42 out of 56 uh, answered the questions and uh, mostly the majority says yes uh that's uh 20 uh, 46 percent and 30 percent says no okay 
Good, good. So this is a well-determined audience. This is uh, good to know. Okay. Um, I would say uh, I would encourage you to uh, to to stay in the driver's seat and um, to go in the driver's seat and stay in the driver's seat to use these answers for yourself to be more confident and more convincing in the next stage where we will dive into right now. So, which is the research and match matching phase? Um, and I'm saying this uh, explicitly, stay and be in the lead. Um, uh, th th there's a good reason that I chose this picture. These are children, um, as you can see, very curious, unprejudiced, um, without judgment, and they are open, curious. And that's what I see maybe a little bit too often that uh, what we do in general is making too much assumptions. So we draw our own conclusion without checking it. And for this phase, this research phase, it's so important that you uh, are, that you create your curiosity towards jobs, towards people, towards companies. Um, because it's good if you create a list of companies, for example, of jobs, of people you want to meet to, to find out what do you really like? What is making you enthusiastic? I think that I want to go into data and analytics, but I'm not sure about that. Hey, go check it. Don't make too soon or too quick your assumption and your conclusion, but go check it. There are so many people available for you. There are so many, there is also so much information on the internet, but it's still information. And it's so nice to talk with people and to dive into their stories, to hear more about their experiences. And in general, it's fun to do. And why it's fun? Because you define yourself with whom you will talk. Nobody is going to say, um, nobody is going to decide it for you, but you are in the lead. So that's the best feeling you can have. So in this phase, I really advise you to, uh, to open up your curiosity and uh, go explore, go talk with people and go check, go check your assumptions. And maybe you do have more questions. Go ask it to them. Another way to uh, find out what you, uh, if something fits with you or not, is also to do more job shadowing or doing an internship. Job shadowing, maybe it sounds like it's not feasible uh, nowadays because of the corona, but I have to admit that even uh, sitting next to someone and experience his or her job in one day will give you much more insight. Um, but of course, being live uh, on on the on the shop floor and um, uh, and, and and experience someone there is different. I do agree. Um, and also discover the growing markets. Right now, of course, uh, when now we are now we are in uh, COVID. Uh, there's a uh, there's an uh, uh, the, the job market has changed, and I have to. Uh, look at it uh, myself, uh, but there are still a lot of opportunities, at least in the Netherlands. There are some growing markets still to mention, uh, like FMCG, like the tech, all the tech, ad tech, fintech, grow tech, agri tech, uh, IT companies, telecom, logistics, uh, consulting, but also uh, finance and investment. Um, so there are plenty of opportunities left, but it's all different. That's what I uh, agree. And be clear about and try to find out also during those conversations, during your exploration phase, are there other things coming on my wish list? What is on my wish list instead of what's only on the company's wish list? So this is this is the fun part. This is really uh, nice to do, and uh, and very very helpful to do. Um, uh, and it's also uh, important to know uh, where you can find 
this information. I will dive into that. It's good to know that 30 to 40% of all vacancies is even not online, which means that those vacancies are filled via via, through the network, by coincidence. Hey, do you know someone uh, for this position? Without even mentioning this vacancy on LinkedIn or in a, in a formal a job platform. So that's quite a lot, which means the importance of networking uh, is very, very big. Um, because if you want to, to know about a vacancy, uh you have to uh people have to know you right so that they can uh, tell you uh, about that vacancy also uh the recruitment agencies and executive search companies um fill 50 percent of the vacancies and another 50 percent is filled by employers directly and what is also very important to know is that those recruiters or even at uh, a recruitment company site, but also in, at employer site, are sourcing more and more on LinkedIn to find ideal candidates. So it's, this is really um, yeah, increasing the number of actively sourcing by recruiters on LinkedIn. In the Netherlands, the importance of LinkedIn is there. 8.3 million people are on LinkedIn, which is 80% of the labor force. I know this is different in other countries. Not in every country, LinkedIn has such huge impact, but in the Netherlands, it's really big. So in the Netherlands, you really have to be on LinkedIn because if you're not there, I would say you don't exist for the job market. And now you know that recruiters are actively sourcing on LinkedIn to find you hopefully uh, it's important that you are able to present yourself in the best way with your uh, let's say preferred jobs but also in the way you want to brand yourself for your future job we will dive into that later on Um, where can I find interesting companies and jobs? I won't go through it, but uh, I guess after this presentation, you will get um, the handout of this uh, of this presentation. And uh, these are very um, uh, common uh, job platforms that we use in the Netherlands. And again, LinkedIn, of course, indeed, which is a, the biggest competitor of LinkedIn. Uh, Magnet.me, which is more focusing on the young professionals with a lot of traineeships, open, open uh, in-house days, uh, webinars for traineeships, that kind of things. Uh, but even the startup um, and scale up uh, landscape in the Netherlands is getting bigger and bigger. Um, and I know that even more and more students from TIAS are interested in this working area as well. So, um, yeah, these, uh, these are very common places where you can find uh, interesting information about jobs, but also about companies and about people. So, and now you know much better uh, what you want, now you know much better about yourself, what your qualities are, what your competences are, uh, uh, what your values are, what your wishes and demands are. It's also important that you try to, and, and now you have talked to a lot of people and you gain a lot of information. It's also important that you look at job descriptions uh, or LinkedIn profiles and to find out where do I match with the vacancy? Where do I match? But also, where are the gaps? Because if you start doing this in time, there is also time to fill those gaps. Like maybe you have to do some skills workshops, uh, hard skills workshops, like maybe data science uh, related workshops or soft skills workshops, like I have to improve my presentation skills. Um, eh, I have to be able to present myself stronger and more convincing in in team in teamwork or maybe in interviews. So, if you start in time, you know where your gaps are and you are able to fill those gaps if you want. 
maybe you say like, no, this investment is too big for me or in money or in time or both. I don't do that. I choose for this job. And that's of course fine, it's fine. But try to stay close to your, I would say to your heart and to follow um, uh, your heart in what you really, really want. What is really close to your, uh, let's say to your demands and wishes. Because I only can advise you one thing and that is to choose. Because not choosing is, is uh, how oh, I have I have a really nice expression about that. Um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, yeah, the only wrong choice is choosing not to make a choice. I really advise you to do so, because what you choose uh, to focus on becomes your reality, and I do believe in that because you have focus and I have advised you to stay in the driver's seat. So you can, you are in the lead and you decided to be in the lead to find out how can I get there? And that's what I advise you to do. Um, it's difficult to, 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 um, uh, to take all uh, the three steps at the same time, like um, uh, region, uh, field industry uh, you come from, and uh, the level of seniority you're in right now. So try to uh, also to explore that, what, what is feasible for me. So after uh, you uh, found out about yourself, you know, uh, you know what is feasible, you know where the gaps are, you know where to go, where you want to go for. It's important that you make a plan because when you make a plan, you are in the proactive driver's seat. And we, uh, I always say we do have two choices in the Netherlands, which is being reactive. Let's say I see a vacancy and I decide to apply for it and then let's see what happens. So this is more the post and pray option. Like I post my CV and let's pray that I will be invited. This is the more reactive way and the more proactive way is like, hey, I decide where I want to go for, I see a vacancy and I'm going to find out myself how good I match with this vacancy. I go talk with people. I go talk with people in those in this company and I will gather this information um, to, uh, to be more strong in my application so that I can make my application even more targeted and more tailored uh, as my competitors. I want to stand out. I choose to stand out. And then, of course, it's important that you that you are able to uh, describe where your added value is. What is making you unique for this position? Where is your added value? Uh, and and just describe this for yourself and, and go practice it and go uh, go um, make your CV. Uh, outstanding. Create a solid brand about yourself. And after you're satisfied about your CV, adjust your LinkedIn profile and start networking. And when you start networking or in the exploration phase, or even now, you never can have to stop networking. It's also important that you think about what do I want them to know about me? When am I satisfied? What do you want to tell about yourself to those people? This is good to realize for yourself in network meetings, but also in job interviews. So uh, the question, what do you want to tell about yourself? What do they have to know about me after we finished our conversation? Because if you think about that proactively, you will be able to steer the conversation because you know I want them to know this, this, and this about me. And I will be, I, I'm determined that I will tell that in my conversation, in my network meeting, or in my job interview. And I will be sure that I will share what I want to share. Not only what they want to know about you, 
but be keen on what you want to share about yourself as well. Um, building a good CV and building a strong CV, uh, take, please take this into account. This should be between your ears. I have to give evidence. Evidence is the kind of magic word in, um, in this stage. Um, because recruiters or hiring managers or the one who is reading your CV, though this person wants to be convinced that you can do the job. This person wants to be convinced that he or wants to be triggered and wants to know more about you. So he decides or she decides to invite you. That's what you want. And the best thing to do that is to give evidence. Hey, I can do it. I'm the right person for you. So evidence is really the key word, the magic word in, in the application phase. But of course, also in networking, because the better you can present yourself by giving the good evidence, the more the other one will be convinced and will be maybe willing to uh, refer you in a later application, for example. So, um, about the CV um, and the profile summary in your CV. This is so important. Here is where you can distinguish yourself from others. Be clear about what your solution is. My solution is that I can help people in being successful in the job market to guide them to the next step in their career by helping them in um, knowing themselves and create a brand uh, which will, will help them to be more successful in their app job applications. Uh, create a brand in CV, in LinkedIn, in job interviews. That's my solution. You should be able to share your solution. After this um, slide, we will have a poll question. I uh, forgot, but we should do it twice, but now we only do it once after this slide. So it's important that you are able to, to show the reader what is making you unique. What is your unique skill set? What specific expertise do you bring uh, so that I decide to invite you? But also, what is your passion? What is your ambition? Dare to make it personal. In general, what I see is that people say, hmm, I keep it a little bit flat. I don't stand out because that's kind of dangerous. And when I do it a little bit, let's say neutral, um, yeah, I think that's the best. No, dare to stand out. Dare to dare, to dare right? Um, also, your working experience is very important. It's not only about your tasks and responsibilities you did in your former job or internship, but it's also about your achievements. And those achievements, don't underestimate them on your CV. It's about the evidence. And what is the best evidence? Numbers, numbers. Use numbers to emphasize your achievements. Like I, um, I created a 20% growth in revenues. I, uh, uh, I scored an eight out of 10 for my thesis project. That kind of evidence should be in your CV. So Amy, we forgot to ask the, uh, about the CV, but let's do it now in a poll question. Do you think that you have a strong CV? Yes or no? Okay, Amy. Yes, so I see here, uh, most of them say no. <laughs> oh, so okay. 22% say no and 27% say yes. Ah, okay. So uh, 
yeah, it's uh, it's it's what it is. But it's also good to to find out and to hear that they that people understand that they can work on this and to optimize it and to to um, let's say to profile themselves towards the future job market. But hey, there's some time left, right? So uh, it's good that we that that you know this in time, so that you can work on it. Eh? You can go through this exploration phase and work on your branding. Uh, yeah, let's say during during the upcoming periods. And if we can help you, please let us know. So we're getting to the end, and I also have to take an eye on the time. Um, create your career action plan that is what i really advise you to do because if you have a plan you are in the lead you are as you can see in the picture you are in the driver's seat and that's what i really advise you to do create smart goals i think you have heard about this before smart specific measurable achievable relevant and time bound this will help you to um yeah, let's say to make things more concrete and to work towards your end goal. And uh, I, I just gave a short, a, a small example of what can be such smart goal. Uh, a smart goal can be, I want to find at least 10 interesting people on LinkedIn who are in a traineeship right now in a corporate organization in the Netherlands. So that's one goal. And another goal is I want to schedule an, an appointment with at least two of them to find more, to find out more about their traineeship, to learn more about what a traineeship is about. How did they get in? Do they have tips and advice from me? How is the company? How do you think about your future? Hey, this is really helpful. And then, for example, I will define at least 10 questions that I can ask one day before I meet those persons. This is a way to stay in the lead. This is what I advise you to do. So this is the end of my presentation. And uh, I hope I uh, gave you some more insights and uh, let's say inspiration to work on your uh, career plan. And um, this is the best advice I can, get, I can give to you. Stay in the driver's seat. Thank you so much for uh, uh, for um, enjoying the for joining this session and I hope to uh, see you in the future okay um, then we have um, Dimas of course our alum uh, who wants to share his story about um, um, yeah let's say a land in your ideal job I think he has a nice story to share with you so Dimas the word is uh, to you okay uh, thanks Marlene and also uh, Amy and Eva so uh, are we going to have Q&A session or uh, it's just a one-way communication from me Okay, um, maybe you can start with your one-way communication okay, and then sure. afterwards we can pay attention to the question and answers. Is that sure. okay, Amy? Yes, of course. Yeah, okay. Great. So um, I will be straightforward because uh, I guess uh, Marlene already explained everything, the framework of, uh, of finding an ideal job very thoroughly. So um, I will not uh, add into that so it's more like a practical experience that i have uh, during my life after tias um, finding uh, an ideal job uh, both in the netherlands and in indonesia so uh, first of all i would like to introduce myself uh, my name is dimas um, i was uh, tias uh, full-time mba students uh, batch 2018 to 2019 and then uh, I worked in the Netherlands uh, uh, from 2019 to 2020, and then I decided to return to Indonesia uh, in uh, March 2020. So um, first of all, uh, because we have a very limited time, I would like to suggest you to visit uh, Tia's blog. Uh, I will I will put in the uh, chat uh, chat box, so you can go there and you will see uh, tons of uh, testimonials from. Tia's alumni, how to find a job and uh, how Tia's uh, help them to uh, grow in their uh, career. 
so uh, that's my first suggestions and then uh, secondly you can see my link in uh, profile there and then uh, let's connect so uh, do not hesitate to add me on your uh, LinkedIn networks because uh, we can uh, of course uh, uh, discuss further uh, in the future and um, I think um, I will say um, yeah I would say thank you to Marlin and uh, Anneli. So in Tias, we have uh, two uh, uh, coach, career coach, and also a personal development coach that uh, really shaped me uh, uh, to become who I am today and uh, really um, helpful to find uh, to finally land a job in the Netherlands because it's quite different, especially we are coming from Asia, from Indonesia. So we have to uh, to we have to be aware that we are entering a completely different job market. Um, so um, first of all, um, what I did at that time, uh, I really stick to the framework that Marlene already explains. Actually, we don't need to worry uh, because I remember the first day we, we started the class, most of the students, uh, they, they asked each other, will you stay in the Netherlands or, or, or will you return to your home country or can we find a job here? Um, most of us, I think it's also uh, uh, highly influenced by Asian cultures. We, we tend to underestimate ourselves. So, um, so that, that was... Uh, the big discussion in the, the in the few first days in 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 Tias. So, but um, I will say Tias already uh, prepared a very um, um, helpful helpful curriculum and also the personal development modules that uh, that along the way help us to uh, prepare the the job search job search after the, the the finish of the MBA. So my suggestion first is uh, follow the framework and. Um, Secondly, um, stick to it, and um, I forgot that's it. Oh, make 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 use all the resources available. For example, Tias provided a lot of uh, uh, courses and sessions about uh, LinkedIn, about CV, about motivation later, about finding uh, your strength, your weakness, and of course, the most importantly is uh, networking events. For example, I found a job. Uh, because uh, Marlene introduced me to one of our alumni who work in that company, and uh, I contacted her before the 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 uh, interview and also in the the test because that was a consulting job. So there was a, a case study interview, so that really helped me how to approach the the test. Um, at least I know uh, about the company culture, about how to um, approach the interview and um, the person who will uh, interview me. So that, that's very uh, uh, important. So I think that's that's quite straightforward. Uh, there is no secret uh, uh, recipes or whatever. You just follow the framework and do your job, do your part, do your homework, and be on the driver's seats. I think uh, everything is available there. So um, I think that's all for me. And yeah, I'm, I'm open to answer any question from you guys. Oh. Thank you so much, Dimas. Yeah. Thank Eva, you. I yes. guess you want to say something, right? Uh, no, I just saw a question here in the chat box. Okay. Uh, let me see uh, if I can make it. Okay, I can see it. Yeah. What are the traits which is a big no to oh, the yeah. recruiters? Sorry for the poor wording. Okay. Um, shall I take this one or uh, maybe? Yeah maybe other people can uh, can add um yeah i think what is the biggest no to the recruiter is uh, being too late <laughs> which is very important in the netherlands uh, be in time so that's one and another big no is uh that you are not able uh, to um to uh, to tell about yourself you should be able to express who you are, what your strengths are, where you're standing for, what your passion and ambition is. This is what in the Netherlands uh, companies really expect you to do. Dimas? Can I add to that? Yeah? Yeah, I think the most important trait that you have to uh, nurture uh, from now is uh, uh, learn to be direct, I would say, 
and be straightforward, be uh, on the driver's seat because it's quite different uh, because I have experienced both working in Indonesia and working in the Netherlands. It, it's quite different. So they expect you to, to be clear, to be uh, um, uh, but to be straightforward and, and yeah, just basically uh, be direct, I would say. So indirect is something that they don't want uh, from you. Yeah, that's a, that's a good addition. Yeah. I see another question. Um, how does the Netherlands handle the current situation on recruitment? Do some of the companies freeze the process? Yes, of course, there are companies who are freezing the process. and um, But there are plenty of companies that are still hiring. So um, I do see enough, let's say, opportunities in the current job market. As I just mentioned before, eh, there are some, some industries, sorry, I have to find it, like FMCG, the tech IT industry, um, telecom logistics consulting that still um, uh, has a lot of opportunities. Although consulting in the Netherlands is, is harder for people from abroad because for most consulting jobs, you have to speak Dutch. I have to be honest about that. But what we see is that companies right now, and I guess that's different uh, also in, um, uh, that's also in Indonesia, but that we, that we have getting used to do things online, right? So an online recruitment process, online interviewing, online onboarding even. So um, yeah, companies are prepared in the Netherlands to onboard their their new employees uh, in this in this different um, situation, COVID situation. Can I can I ask something about this question? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I work in Netherlands a um, few years ago. I think our in Dutch culture is quite common to have like a flexible flexible working time and also the remote working style. I think uh, it's quite usual in the Netherlands, so uh, there won't be too much problem in Netherlands if they cannot to go to the office. Yeah. Every no, day. yeah, I agree on that, and I think mm -hmm. that's also a reason for people to come to the Netherlands. <laughs> to be honest, that yeah. uh, the Netherlands uh, has a um, has a, a balanced life mm -hmm. working climate. Like uh, there's a good balance between work and life. Mm -hmm. Like uh, yeah. uh, no, over, working in overtime is not so common. Eh? So mm -hmm. there's uh, also enough time left for your personal life. Yeah. That's what mm -hmm. uh, I know that people uh, uh, do um, uh, choose the Netherlands. Yeah, indeed. Uh, shall we take the, the next question? Because I, I saw lots of questions right now. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Can we? Okay. Uh, yeah, to... I think we can uh, use a one more questions okay and then we can okay. continue because we have a uh, limited time uh yeah. we only and have one hour for continue. this uh, yeah. okay yeah okay i would like to uh add that i can answer or we can try to answer these questions uh, later on to those people oh yeah if that's possible if that's technical possible but yeah okay so let's choose one more i leave it up to you amy all right then uh so i see here we have uh four other questions uh maybe uh okay uh let me see what is right for me, you know? Let's maybe one this one, one in uh about education background as their career from uh, I don't see that one. Okay, okay. Oh, what yeah. is your opinion for some people choosing different paths from their education background as their career? Yeah, um, yeah, it's possible. It's really possible. But you have to make a plan then. And even then, it's even more important to have a good, good, uh, um, yeah, uh, how, a firm plan how to get there. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because it takes more effort. Yeah, indeed. Agreed. And I won't say it's not possible. Uh, can I add something about this as well? Uh, because I also study at TIAS for MSDBA program. 
but but for my bachelor degree here in Taiwan in Asia, I study in science, earth science about the earthquake, yeah. and then I changed okay. to business. Why why uh what makes me to change? Because I I I identify the gap. That's also Marlene's um talk about. You know where are you going to, and then you need to find out what's the gap in between. And then you need to find the resource to fill in the gap. And then that's my decision. That's why uh, I chose to uh, to take MSCBA degree at DS and then change to um, yeah business domain know-how. De de definitely uh, different than the science ones. So yeah, I I've think, yeah. Dimas, please. Yeah, that's that's the same case for me. If you if you yeah, go yeah. to the uh, Tias website, the uh, uh, the life after Tias blog, my article, uh, the title was um, uh, evolving from a scientist to a consultant yeah. and to a banker. Um, um, by education, yeah. <laughs> I was a scientist, like pure scientist. I used to work in the laboratory, working with chemicals yeah. and stuff, and then now I'm in the financial industry. Uh, to be specific in banking industry and i found out that's uh, the added value of uh, studying mba uh, specifically mm -hmm. uh, at yeah. tias that's also answering the other questions uh, how important is study further in in postgraduate level i think yeah, okay. that can be one answer to bridge uh, the, the gap yeah. as as ava mentioned before yeah 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 thank you so much good addition ava i guess that you have to uh, share uh, the prize uh, the competition prize is, yeah <laughs> oh wait 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 the Our, cv competition yeah yeah so oh wait 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 this one so uh for the attendance year we are going to to play again time so firstly uh you probably uh want to think about uh, what Marlene has shared with you to find a gap, to set a goal, and then to have the uh, actual solid career action plan. And for your resume, we are going to pick up one winner for the best resume. And then you are going to win the 60 minute coaching session. That's the most valuable uh, TS experience. So uh, feel how to do that, uh, how to win that prize, then uh, you need to Firstly, to work on your resume, especially in English, and then you need to send it to me. Here's my uh, email address, and then we will pick up the best resume, and then we will uh, inform the winner or to inform the uh, inform Emmy and New Fake Neso, Indonesia, and then we will announce that prize. Yeah, go for it. Can I participate in this game? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. You can. You want to also? Want to? <laughs> <laughs> the most valuable. Uh, yeah, Dimas here, wants actually. another session. <laughs> Very good I, I, uh, opportunity. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, feel free to share your resume with me, and then we will pick up the best one. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank yeah. you so much, Ava, Miss Cronin, and uh, Mr. Dima Sutomo, for your uh, yeah, for uh, who have been very kind in joining us today and also sharing very informative uh, session. And of course, uh, all the audience that uh, have joined us today to to yeah to actively participating, uh, asking question as well. So if you uh, have uh, further questions about uh, the the competition, <laughs> we may say. Yeah. Uh, you can always uh, send the the, the questions to uh, Miss Eva Lai. Also, if you have further uh, yeah follow up questions, as uh, Miss uh, Miss Cronin has, has said, you can also uh, send the the questions to I think to Miss Eva if that's yeah, okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yes. That's okay. So you can just yeah. uh, all all of the questions can be sent to uh, uh, Miss Eva Lay's uh, email address. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, unfortunately, we have come to the end of this webinar. Really sorry that we uh, we don't have. Uh, more time to answer all of the questions but i would like to thank you again miss marlene Cronen, miss eva lai mr dimasutomo who have already joined us and uh, of course uh, i would like to uh, say that uh, yeah like uh, miss Cronen said that uh, as a person 
I really like the set that you are actually, uh, yeah, you are in the driver's seat. You have your own choices, you have your own decisions, so you should be able to have uh, your own control to, to, yeah, you know, to, to make your own uh, career plan. So uh, I think also uh, to, to, to close the, the webinar, also I would like to say that networking is also important. But you you also have to uh, yeah keep in mind with your uh, soft soft skills. So you have to to develop your soft skills, and uh, yeah uh, stay in the driver's seat. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you so much, and uh, yeah uh, thank you for again for the audience who have uh, joined us. And I would like to say goodbye to everyone and have a great. Uh, uh, day for the Netherlands and uh, have a great evening for uh, the others for from Indonesia. Okay. Bye bye. 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 Bye b